In this video, I'm going to provide a proof for a result known as Parseval's theorem or Rayleigh's energy theorem. And the goal of this is to express uh, essentially the conservation of energy in terms of uh, Fourier transforms. So to motivate this physically, if we consider a function f of t to describe some signal, for example, an electromagnetic wave being sent to some receiver, then the integral of the square modulus of this function is proportional to the total energy in that signal. And we would like to use Fourier transforms to see if there is an alternative way of saying this. And as usual, uh, the motivation of this is uh, sometimes we have information in a different form than as the signal, depending on the way that we collect uh, or measure the signal. So we'll begin by writing out the total energy in our signal. And We'll split this up. So remember the square modulus is the product of the function with its complex conjugate in general. Okay, so this function can have uh, complex numbers as an output. And then we're going to rewrite each one of these in terms of its Fourier transform. So we have our initial integral. We can rewrite f of t in terms of its Fourier transform f tilde of w. Omega t integrator with respect to omega. And we'll rewrite a complex conjugate of f of t in a similar way in terms of its Fourier transform. This time we'll use a different variable of integration just to differentiate it from this one. So it's uh, omega prime over here. And then we want the complex conjugate of this quantity. This, this replaces the complex conjugate of f of t. And this is all integrated with respect to t, as we had over here. Now, because each one of these functions doesn't depend on time, we can separate out the two integrals with respect to the frequencies, omega and omega prime. And then treat the integral with respect to time first. And we have to leave it inside of the integrals with respect to frequency because this function will ultimately depend on the frequency. So we'll have to integrate that as well. Okay, so here I've just combined these two uh, exponentials together. The minus sign comes from taking the complex conjugate of e to the i omega prime t. Now, if you remember from the last video, we had defined a quantity that we called the Dirac delta function. As follows. I'm integrated with respect to K 
Okay. And what you should notice is this quantity is very similar to this quantity over here, except that T has been replaced by K and the X's have been replaced by omegas. So, in our current variables, we could rewrite this as two pi times this delta function, now as a function of omega minus omega prime. Okay, so given our definition in the last video of this delta function, we can identify this term in square brackets as a delta function times two pi. So we can rewrite this expression over here. Replacing the delta function, we have an extra factor of two pi from over here. And we still have our integrals with respect to the frequency. We can continue to manipulate this. We can take out the constant. And then we separate out our, our integrals. So we can first treat the integral with respect to omega prime, leaving the delta function in this one. And then after that, treat our integral with respect to omega. Now by the properties of the delta function, we saw in the last video that the only thing that delta function does is it filters out the value of our function at the frequency omega. And uh, I forgot over here, this should be the complex conjugate from over here. Complex conjugate and complex conjugate over there. So that means that we're left with this and then this integral filters out the value of f, a complex conjugate of f tilde omega prime. It's f tilde omega complex conjugate of that which then gives us the square modulus of the Fourier transform of our original function. Okay, so what we've shown over here is the square modulus of our original function f of t, which we associated with the total energy in our signal is proportional to the square modulus of the Fourier transform of that function integrated over all frequencies. And this is a different representation of energy uh, in each interval of frequency. So when you integrate over, this again gives you a total energy. So this is why this theorem is also sometimes called Rayleigh's energy theorem because all it's saying is uh, energy is conserved uh, between these two different representations. You can either represent it in time or you can represent your signal in frequency. And 
they both give you the same amount of energy. In the next video, we'll do an example that will further uh, motivate Parseval's theorem and its physical interpretation.